So in stoichiometry, the second thing is about the modes. Look, in this revision classes, I'm quickly going through a topic, but if you want detail, because I, I already explained the topics in detail, but if anyone want detail of any specific topic, or you have any question in between, you can uh, use your mic or you can use the chat to ask your doubts or a question. Because the main purpose is not just to go through the topic, it's to clear your doubts as well related to the topic. You can use your mic or you can use the chat to convey your questions. So the concept of the moles, the concept, the definition of the mole, basically mole is amount of substance which contains six exponent 23 particles, atoms, ions, molecules, like this many particles are there, which is also known as the Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. We call that as one mole of a substance. And if we have one mole of any gas, which is also known as a molar volume, when the one mole of a gas is there at room temperature and pressure, that is known as the 24 dm cube. That is also known as a molar volume. And if you want to find the molar volume, it's mole multiplied by 24. Calculate stoichiometric uh, reacting masses, volume of the gas, solution, concentration of a solution expressed in gram per dm cube and mole per dm cube. So what we can do, we can use this uh, method. Moles equal mass in gram divided by for formula mass. Here the formula mass means it can be atomic mass, it can be a molecular mass. You can use uh, moles equal volume divided by 24 or volume is equal to mole multiplied by 24. But keep in mind, this is only valid for when we have a gas, like a gaseous reactant is there, a gaseous product is there. We can use this formula. And if we have the solution, like example, we have acids, uh, salts, alkalis. So we can find the concentration Concentration we can find in two ways. Concentration can be gram per dm cube or it can be mole per dm cube. If we are finding gram per dm cube, it's a mass of solute divided by volume of solution in dm cube. If you are finding in mole per dm cube, it's a moles of substance solute divided by volume of solution in dm cube. And if you want to convert the mole per dm cube into gram per dm cube, what you will do, you will multiply by relative molecular mass. If, and if you want to convert gram per dm cube into mole per dm cube, you'll divide by relative molecular mass. You can also use, because sometimes you don't have the complete information. So in that case, you can use the simplest ratio. And using a ratio, you can work out the limiting reagent. What is the limiting reagent? The term limiting reagent means the reactant which used up completely and amount of product form depends on this reagent. You can work out the limiting reagent by comparing the moles, by comparing the masses, by comparing the volume. Calculating an empirical formula, how you can calculate an empirical formula, the steps. Like example, the steps are there first, divide by atomic mass, then take a simplest ratio, then round it off. If molecular formula is given, like example, the molecular formula, when we talk about, look, for example, the difference between reagent and reactant, when I say H2 plus Cl2 gives HCl, to HCl. So when I collectively say, like instead of saying hydrogen and chlorine, I can say reactant. When I use the term reactant, involve both of them. But when I use the term reagent, means I'm talking about specific. And only one of them, 
if i'm talking about any one of them i'll use the term reagent but if i'm talking about both of them i'll use the term reactant that's the difference between them so you can find the moles uh, you can find the empirical formula from molecular formula so example a molecular formula for compound is fe2 O4. So the simplest ratio between them, 2 and 4, that is 1 is 2. 2 to so the empirical formula will be Fe O2. You can also use another way. What we can do, we can divide by atomic mass. If the percentage or the mass is given, we'll divide by atomic mass. Then we divide by smallest value and then take the simplest whole number. Simplest ratio in whole number from empirical formula, how we can find the molecular formula. So molecular formula is equals to empirical formula times N and what is N? N is molecular mass divided by empirical mass. So you'll get the value of N. It should be a whole number then multiplied by empirical formula. You will get the molecular formula. Calculating the percentage yield, how to calculate a percentage yield? Percentage yield, basically, when we carry out the experiment, practically, we are not getting the same amount what the theory predict. We always get less than that. So amount of product which is produced divided by total mass of a product, the theoretical value into 100. These are the triangles which are showing how you can learn these formulas relating moles. N is sent for moles, capital M is sending for molecular mass and small m is showing the mass in gram. The stoichiometry basically it should be like you should practice questions related to stoichiometry. It's, it's a, based on your practice rather than understanding because more different type of questions you practice it will improve your understanding of stoichiometry topic five is about electricity and chemistry which is also electrolysis So electricity and chemistry, how we define a term electrolysis. So breakdown of a compound, ionic compound or molten or aqueous solution by passing the electricity that's called electrolysis, this process. And this is according to the syllabus outline, this revision sheet, as you can see, define electrolysis. So definition even in the syllabus is given. Then describe the electrode product and observation made during electrolysis of molten lead to bromide concentrated hydrochloric acid concentrated sodium chloride and dilute sulfuric acid using inert inert means unreactive electrodes such as platinum or carbon so the simple way to understand this concept first we categorize the ion the positive ion the less reactive positive ion will move towards cathode And more react ion, which is more in solution, the concentrated negative ion will move towards anode, but exceptions are there like. Even 
sulfates nitrates even they are more in the solution or carbonate they cannot move because of their mass less mobile ions the sulfate carbonate and nitrate that's why even they are higher in concentration but they will not move towards the respective electrode how we identify the less reactive positive ion so we have to check the reactivity just the using a reactivity series you can work out which one is less reactive like if you are doing electrolysis of molten lead to bromide so molten lead to bromide first identify the ions which are present so it contain lead ion and it contain bromide ion lead ions when it is a molten means it does not contain when the substance is molten it does not contain uh, any water molecules so the you have to learn about molten lead to bromide pbbr2 so ions which are present lead is plus 2 and bromine is minus 1 so bromide ion will move towards anode and when bromide ion will move towards anode when one bromide ion is, is there it will lose one electron and it change to bromine atom but non metal exists as a diatomic so when two bromide ions are there they will lose two electron and it will form bromine molecule you should be able to write the observation as well bromine what you will observe you will observe red brown gas or red brown vapors because the temperature bromine is liquid at room temperature but to make a substance molten you have to increase the temperature that's why it is vapor not a liquid bromine and lead ions when they will they are attracted positive ions attracted towards cathode they will take two electron and changes to lead atom when it's gaining electron we call reduction when it is losing electron we call oxidation and whenever a metal is formed so you will mention a shiny solid the second one is concentrated hcl so concentrated hcl h ion is there cl ion h ion and oh ion because hydrogen ion is same so that will move towards cathode so when hydrogen ion will move towards cathode when two will move there they will take two electron and form hydrogen gas but because it is a concentrated so cl is more so cl is more the for negative ion you will check the amount the ion which is more in the solution will move towards anode so chloride ion will move it will lose one electron change to chlorine atom but when two chloride ions are there they will lose two electron and form chlorine gas concentrated sodium chloride so concentrated sodium chloride the ions which are present it contain na ion cl ion h ion and oh ion because it is for positive ion you check the reactivity so hydrogen will move and for negative ion you check the amount because we mentioned it is a concentrated so cl is more and what we are left with because these ions will move towards their respective electrodes when hydrogen gas it's a colorless gas chlorine chlorine is yellowish green gas given off and what it left with we are left with sodium hydroxide so solution will turn alkaline same way when you are doing for dilute sulfuric acid aqueous sodium chloride as well so for aqueous sodium chloride na and cl h ion is there and oh ion so aqueous here both are aqueous but the term aqueous generally used for dilute solutions as well like if it is not specified so we will consider them as dilute h will move and oh will move so oxygen gas will be there and as a result it will become concentrated nacl solution if you are doing sulfuric acid so sulfuric acid contain h i so4 i and h i and oh i so hydrogen will move and sulfate even it's more if even it's dilute or concentrated sulfate cannot move so oh i will move and the solution will turn into concentrated 
sulfuric acid. So these are the products which are given. Now relate the product of electrolysis to electrolyte and electrode using the exemplified by specific example. If you are doing aqueous copper two sulfate using carbon electrode and using copper electrodes. So what, what will be the difference if we are using or doing electrolysis using inert electrode and active electrodes? Example two electrodes are made up of carbon and another case one of the electrode is made up of copper the other one can be made up of any material it does not make difference to the result positive negative positive negative and you are doing electrolysis of copper to sulfate copper to sulfate soluble salt so it contains copper ion sulfate ion, hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. Same way it contains copper ion, sulfate ion, hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion. The positive ion less reactive will move so copper ions are less reactive they will move towards the cathode. So first thing the first step is same. So what will be the equation at cathode basically what happened at cathode the copper ions are attracted towards the cathode and take electrons so they will stick to this size of the cathode will increase as the metal will stick to the surface here also same thing happen if copper ions attracted towards electrode change, change into copper atom so the size of a cathode will change now the difference is what difference it is making the anode will make a difference here we have anode made up of copper and this side the anode is made up of carbon so as the amount of the carbon amount of copper in the solution decreases to overcome this copper atom from the electrode will go inside the solution as a copper ion. So at anode what happened? Copper atom will go inside the solution as a copper ion by loss of electron. So the size of this anode will decrease. But here we don't have any copper available. So what happened? The hydroxide ion will move towards the anode and it will form oxygen gas. So we'll see bubbles because oxygen gas is there. And here we'll see a size of the anode will decrease. Equation for anode will be when four hydroxide ions are there, they will lose four electron, they will give oxygen and four water molecules. So that is the difference between using inert and active electrode. Here, one more thing, the solution color will not change. Why? Because when one copper ion will move, Toward the cathode at the same time one copper atom from the anode converts into copper ion. So overall concentration of the copper ion does not change. So solution color will not change. But in this one the amount of the copper ion is decreasing as it is moving towards cathode. So the solution color will get paler or lighter. So why the OH ion, the equation for OH ion is there, the temperature of this electrolysis is not too high that's why oxygen carbon dioxide is not there. But using, uh, when we are doing electrolysis of uh, extraction of aluminium, in that case the temperature is around 980 degrees centigrade that leads to a reaction between carbon and oxygen produced give carbon dioxide. But here. We are just passing a current through the electrolyte the solution at room temperature. So when four hydroxide ions are there, they will lose four electrons. It gives oxygen and it gives two water molecules. So this oxygen gas which is produced does not react with the carbon because the temperature is too low. In our extraction of aluminium, the temperature is too high. That, that's why there was carbon dioxide given off.
so we can use uh, this method for electroplating for like example if i want a silver plating i want a copper plating i want tin plating so what what are the things the materials for electroplating method coating an object with a metal using electrolysis a negative electrode is a made up of object which we want to electroplate like if i want to electroplate a key then negative one electrode is made up of key if i want to electroplate a nail then negative uh, terminal nail is connected to a negative terminal if i want to electroplate a ring then negative terminal should have that ring so we have this battery a negative terminal the object which we want to electroplate example we want to electroplate a ring the positive one we will make of metal which we want to plate like example if i want a copper plating so this should be made up of copper and the electrolyte should be a salt of that metal which we are electroplating so it can be all nitrates are sorted soluble so better take nitrate so copper ion will move towards the ring and copper atom will go inside the solution as a copper ion so at the as a result we will have a layer of copper on the surface so we can also use this method for electro uh, uses of electroplating for cutlery for metal pans you should be able to write the ionic equation for anode and cathode then describe the reason the use of copper and steel core aluminum cable why plastic and ceramic are used as insulator because aluminum is a good conductor of electricity so therefore used as overhead power cable copper is also a good conductor of electricity it's used in electrical wiring and plastic and ceramics are insulators so does not conduct electricity so the covering the case of the plug is made up of either plastic or ceramic then describe the transfer of charge during electrolysis include the movement of electron and the removal and addition of electron so what happened the movement of electron in a metallic conductor electrons move in the wire and the positive and negative ion will move in the electrolyte like when you have a solution if the question is show the direction of movement of electron so positive positive and negative ion so electrons attracted towards the positive terminal of the battery and electrons will come out from the negative terminal of the battery and within the solution electrons can not move ions can move to their respective electrodes describe the production of electrical energy from a simple cell so working of a cell in case of cell what we use we use how we construct a cell a chemical cell it is made up of two metals which are having difference in reactivity example this one is zinc another one is copper you connect a lamp or a bulb or any device which which can use electrical energy and electrolyte normally acids are used aqueous so h if i use hydrochloric acid it can be sulfuric acid as well h ion and s o h ion it can be h2so4 as well does not make difference now how it works it based the reactivity based on the uh, the reaction based on or the way they react based on the difference in the reactivity so when we write the reactivity series we have potassium sodium calcium 
magnesium, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead, copper, silver, uh, mercury, gold, uh, mercury, silver, gold, platinum. So we are using copper, zinc and copper. So zinc is more reactive. So the more reactive will go react with an acid. So it will go inside the solution and lose its electron. And what happened to the electron which are lost by the zinc? So these electron will travel. And when they travel in the external circuit, the lamp will light up and these electron will move to the copper surface. Electrons are negative. Electrons are negative. So they will attract the positive ion. So as they attract the positive ion, the hydrogen ions are there. These hydrogen ions are attracted and it will form hydrogen atom. When two are there, they will take two electron and form hydrogen gas. So we'll see bubbles on the copper electrode. For copper, there is no change, but due to the difference in the reactivity, the transition or movement of electron is there. So equation here for zinc changes to zinc ion by loss of two electrons. The more reactive, the more reactive is always called a cathode and the less reactive electrode is known as anode. If we want to increase the cell voltage, the energy or brightness of the lamp, so we should use two metals of greater difference in reactivity. Like example, zinc and copper, so I can use calcium and copper because calcium and copper have greater difference. So the bulb will be brighter, greater uh, amount of energy transferred to the bulb or lamp as compared to zinc and copper. So using the voltage produced by these uh, cells, we can identify or we can also set up a reactivity. For example, if this is two volts and this one is producing 1.3 volts, so we can identify that the difference in the reactivity of copper and calcium is more as compared to zinc and calcium. The solution of this electrolyte, the electrolyte is sulfuric acid, acid normally. This anode and cathode is not in terms of oxidation and reduction. It is in terms of movement of electrons. Yeah, there is a reason why acids are used because acids can, the metal can react easily with acid as compared to other substances. That is the reason we are using acid. We can also use a salt solution, but metal might not react with salt solution. What is the difference between cell and electrolysis? In a cell, the chemical energy converted into electrical energy. Like there's a chemical reaction which produces charges. But in electrolysis, we are passing the current and we separate the charges. Look, we have two electrodes made up of different metal. Example, zinc and copper and you're having an acid here H plus SO4 sulfuric acid is there and aqueous all acids are aqueous so H and OH when you connect a wire between zinc and copper so what happened Zinc is more reactive. So when zinc is more reactive, what does it mean? It can react with acid. So when it reacts with acid, it will turn into zinc ion and zinc ion will enter the solution. When it enters the solution, the electron which are lost by the zinc travel to the copper surface. In terms of movement of electron, because electrons are moving. So in terms of movement of electron, this is a positive terminal and this one is a negative terminal. Because electrons are negative, so they are attracted towards positive. So it means this is acting like a positive terminal and other one is a negative terminal and electrons on this surface attracted attract the hydrogen ions. So when hydrogen ions are attracted, what it result, it will result in a formation of hydrogen gas. 
when two hydrogen ions are there they will take two electron and form hydrogen gas so we'll see bubbles and the size of this electrode zinc electrode will decrease maybe you have seen like example even using a lemon you can uh, produce a voltage what you can do you just use two electrodes one made up of copper another one is made up of zinc and connect a milli voltmeter a small voltmeter or even you can a digital watch you can connect so you will find that this will show a voltage or the watch start to work why the same idea because inside the lemon there is an acid which is called a citric acid so the reaction is there zinc will react with citric acid loses electron which travel and result in a formation of hydrogen gas as well so same idea same concept is used when we are converting chemical energy to electrical energy we call chemical cell when we convert electrical energy to chemical we call that as electrolytic cell so opposite of each other both are manufacture of aluminum from pure aluminum oxide so how we manufacture aluminum aluminum is manufactured by electrolysis of the molten aluminum oxide and cryolite using the carbon electrode aluminum oxide is having a very high melting point so we use a cryolite which lower its melting point and the positive electrode need to be continuously replaced because oxygen react which is formed at the positive electrode react with carbon so it will remove will reduce the size of this electrode so we have to continuously remove it that uh, means replace it the reason the why we are not using a platinum electrode because a platinum is it is making the reaction expensive like carbon electrode when we commercially prepare any substance or a compound we keep all the things in mind like commercial use the cost energy required so carbon electrodes are very cheap as compared to platinum that's why it is not used otherwise the extraction of aluminum will be too costly as compared to what we receive or what we did now do now so when we do electrolysis of the sodium chloride so chlorine gas is formed at positive electrode hydrogen gas formed at negative electrode and the solution will turn into sodium hydroxide so this is a summary summary of this chapter electrolysis the, the direction of the electron flow as you can see the positive terminal terminal of a battery electrons are moving towards the gray shade is representing the electrons when we are using or we are purifying the copper so this is uh, impure copper this one is pure copper and the electrolyte is copper salt copper will move towards cathode copper ion will go inside the solution and the impurities will left behind this is not from positive to negative it's the direction of electron flow this is a chemical electrolytic cell in electrolytic cell what happened the this is a positive terminal of the battery the positive terminal of the battery attract the negative ions when these negative ions they lose their electron these electron will move towards the positive terminal of the battery and what happened the negative ions uh, the electrons from negative terminal of the battery will go inside so majority of the electrons are here which will attract the positive ion so positive ions will take those electron this is a electrolytic cell in which we are passing a current and chemical changes happen and in a chemical cell the chemical reaction produces electrons
So if you want to plate an object that is connected with a negative terminal, an anode is made up of a material which we are using for layer. Like if you are using a silver, so this would be made up of silver. The electrolyte should be a soluble salt, like example, silver nitrate. So silver ion will move towards the object, the negative electrode. Silver atom will go inside the solution as a silver ion. So this was topic five, electricity and chemistry. Next week, we will discuss more topics. Any question related to the class today? So I'll end the session and share this with you.